My name is Tinker Hatfield and I uh, have been a shoe designer at Nike and a corporate architect and now I'm vice president of, of design and special projects. I was originally hired at Nike in uh, 1981 as, uh, as the corporate architect. And so the first, my first four and a half years at Nike were spent mostly uh, designing office spaces and showrooms and stores. And um, you know, I was convinced that architecture was, um, was, was the profession for me because, uh, because it is uh, probably one of the um, best examples of the combination of kind of art and science and sort of I think uh, cultural experience. When I was asked to start designing shoes, and it was actually a request um, by someone here at Nike, um, I jumped at the chance because I realized uh, for, for the environment I was in and, and for the future that uh, designing shoes was, gonna, was where the real action was. The very first uh, more um, high profile project and, 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 and as it turns out a very controversial one was really uh, the uh, Air Max, the original Air Max with a visible air window and uh, along with it um, some other shoes that uh, were presented as a, as a package. As I often say, when you sit down to design something, it can be anything. It can be a car, a toaster, a house, a, a tall building, or a shoe. Uh, what you draw or what you, what you uh, design uh, is really a culmination of everything that you've seen and done in your life previous to that point. And I had been to Paris. I had been to uh, I mean, we, uh, a lot of us at Nike have traveled um, extensively uh, to try and be inspired, to uh, understand people from all over the world in different, different uh, cities, different cultures, different regions. I uh, had known about this uh, very interesting, um, very innovative and uh, very controversial building called the Georges Pompidou Center. was one of my must-sees when I was in Paris. I had to go, I had to go and uh, coming into the, the plaza um, surrounding this, the center and then just to see uh, the stark contrast between the um, traditional French style of, um, you know, uh, mansard roofs and, and uh, uh, small windows and, um, you, know, you know, sort of row housing, if you will. Um, and then to see this large, almost machine-like building um, sort of spilling its guts out into the world. In other words, you could just see everything. You could see the, the escalators and the heating and air conditioning. You could see the levels of the, of, uh, you know, the different parts of the museum and, and uh, I could see people. It, it really inspired me because it really shook the world of architecture. It shook the world of urban design. It really changed the way people looked at buildings. For many, it changed uh, for the worse but uh, in my eyes, it changed for the better. I don't know if I was thinking, well, now I'm gonna go design a shoe um, based off of this. I don't think I was thinking that way. I just remember being really super influenced by it um, and, and having my architectural senses sort of turned upside down. We had technically tried to um, increase the, the size of our air, airbag cushioning. So the, the encapsulated airbags that we were using for, especially in the heel cushioning, were, um, were a little bit smaller. They were encased inside all, this, all, this, all of this polyurethane and you couldn't, you couldn't see it. And, and really, most people didn't understand what air was. We have finally designed a bag that puts the largest amount of air into the shoes for cushioning 
but we've, we've also widened the bay so that we're not sacrificing stability at all. Well, that's great, but how are we going to fit an air sole this wide into our midsoles? Yeah, but why not just show it? You know, it's not a bad idea to let people actually see what an airbag looks like. As a matter of fact, uh, I've got a drawing here that actually shows what a, what a shoe could look like with a visible uh, window in the heel. I'm fully convinced that had I not seen the building, I might not have, uh, I might not have suggested that we actually expose this airbag and make it visual and, uh, and actually uh, let people see inside the shoe. you do something different, you have to have a pretty thick skin. People are going to take, take uh, sh shots at you. They're going to criticize uh, what they don't understand. And I just remember people being very upset about it and, and the head of marketing for running was not in favor of that shoe and, and just couldn't see how that we could sell some, a shoe that had uh, a hole in the side of it that uh, you know, people thought it was going to be too vulnerable and the air, air would, airbags would be punctured and that uh, it just didn't look like a normal running shoe. And, and even the color of the shoe, which would have to, had this bright red sort of rand or this stripe all the, all the way around the bottom, just above the midsole. If you go to the back to the Pompidou Center, um, not only did uh, Piano and his team expose all of the inside of the structure and the, and the mechanical systems, but he painted everything in bright colors because uh, he wanted those things to be uh, visible from a distance and that to, to be striking and to uh, maybe shake people up even a little bit more. And I think that's what happened with the Air Max too. I really wanted to uh, um, just push it as far as I could possibly push it without being fired. <laughs> I believe that uh, that entire air pack of shoes, including the Air Max, was um, uh, probably pretty pivotal in changing around Nike's uh, sort of uh, direction.